Welcome to 50 Laps My Way with Tony Morakovich. That was good. We're Thank you. Better. That's better than, than better than our last one. That's because we never had one before. You're right. We'll keep messing around with that. Okay. So in this episode, we have a lot to cover. It's been a little bit. So it has been a while, buddy. Yes. The last episode was after um, Dover, I believe, and before Texas, or maybe it was after Texas. I don't even think we had Texas in there yet. Yeah, you're right. I, I know a lot of our followers know, though, we went to Texas. Mm-hmm. Doing pretty well there, and then uh, ran out of tires and lost brakes a little bit, but had to park it, part of it. But um, so far, early summer, NASCAR and NBC started their My Track, My Roots program, dirt tracking, local stuff program. So we got involved a little bit about that. What do you okay. think about all that? What are your tracks, buddy? Um, I guess for us it'd be uh, Susquehanna Speedway, BAPS, known as BAPS Speedway, Lincoln Speedway, Williams Grove. Um, so we uh, do a lot of legend racing around here and kart racing and things like that. And then uh, actually made a trip out to Susquehanna before Pocono. You were there for that one. Yeah, tell us a little bit about that, yeah, buddy. Yeah, that was a fun one. Joe Nemechek did not know about that. Um, uh, your dad already showed him anyway, yeah, so yeah. Wasn't supposed to find out, but we took uh, took the legend car out to Susky, and um, there was about 40 cars there, and we're just running for some fun. There's a modified guys there the next day, and big uh, big payout race. Not really for for the legends as much as the modifieds, but got to uh, run there. We got to test there the week before, and we were doing pretty good. Started 13th, and I think got up to about fifth there. And then uh, last lap, going through the checkers. We were supposed to race the next day, too. So, like, we were totally – I was content running Well, fifth. before you go that far, yeah. why didn't you race the next well, day? The di- well, the car was, was gone because uh, coming to the checkered flag, the uh, second-place guy – I'm not going to say he deliberately took out the leader. Cause yeah, he did. Yeah, it, it was pretty obvious. <laughs> you were the witness. You saw it better yeah, than Yeah, he, he, he directly turned into him, took, took, took her out, and yeah. yeah, spun her out at the checkers. Yes, so we got right reared and uh, kind of Clint Boyard it um, across the finish line. Still got fifth. I think we were actually in six, and we flipped faster than they spun. It was so, amazing. Yes, thank God for transponders. So, needless to say, the purse for fifth place was not nearly as much as the damage cost, so... How many how many uh, flips did you actually do, bud? I was told four to six. So I think it was it was yeah. I was counting like five. I think. Mm-hmm. Average. Yes. Yeah. Average. So so we'll, we'll, we'll shoot for somewhere in the middle there, about five. Yeah. There's uh the videos up on on the YouTube channel, so feel free to be the judge. You check it out. I can't tell when the GoPro broke off. That's what's deceiving. Inside, you yeah, you rolls, had the GoPro inside the inside the car. And then sure. It broke and. Uh, yeah, there was a lot of things in the car that shouldn't have been in the car by the end of that. <laughs> but it was the uh, the master cylinder cap, which is, you know, on the other side of the firewall. There's really no holes anywhere. Somehow that ended up through the window inside, and I had a lot of fuel on me, so that was kind of scary for a second. But Yeah, which actually you didn't even know right away, I don't no, think, uh-huh. because everything happened so quickly. You got out of the car relatively quick. And then I remember you saying, like, maybe a day or two later, man, my fire suit stinks. Yeah, it was crazy. Like, I, I remember a little bit of cold drips, but and I was like, okay, I need to maybe hurry this up a little bit. But it was pouring in there. <laughs> and it's funny how everything goes to one corner of the car. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what happened. Like, I threw my gloves off when I was half upside down. So I threw my gloves off, and it went to that corner and just sat in that puddle of gas, apparently. Because when I took it out of the bag, they were soaked. Nasty. It's crazy, yeah. Um, tell us, tell us what happened to the car. I mean, what it was, it was deemed pretty much unusable after that. So, what, yeah. what was the, what was the main points? What could you use? What couldn't you use? Yeah, basically, um, sadly, there's nothing really left to use anymore, <laughs> which kind of stunk. Um, to, I mean, well, no, the engine was okay. I don't know how much we're gonna use that, but the engine itself was actually okay, which is huge, obviously. Um, Chassis was bent in three different places, uh, rear end. Um, we're not sure yet if that's bent. We know the, the backing plates on each side are where the wheels mm-hmm. were hitting. 
Um, it seemed like it hit the right side every time it would skip over the left. So the left side, I mean, we're probably not going to reuse those parts, but, like, it just came down on the right side and then skipped yeah. and came down again. And so that side was pretty tore up. Um, drive shaft completely dismounted and disconnected and oil cooler smashed. And, um, so, no, it's a shame that had to happen uh, <laughs> pretty much after the checkers. But it was uh, – we proved a lot for not really being in one. That's true. More than once in the last two years, so – that was cool, but um, and it was spectacular. spectacular yeah. You had a good view of that. You were sitting <laughs> with the parents, so what was that like? Oh, that was fun. Y your dad, like in a flash, just kind of. I heard your mom say Tony, <laughs> and then your dad said, "My boy," <laughs> and he bolted through the gate and it was like threatening officials, and oh, yeah, yeah, so it was good. It was it was good times. Oh yeah. I knew you were okay. I had faith the whole time. I was like, he's fine. He's yeah, good. Yeah, worth money. I was surprised that anybody was worried, but apparently nobody caught me getting out and standing on top of the car like I had won the thing. But I did do that. I know, but I just didn't have a camera at the time. I didn't know you were going to do that. It would have been perfect, honestly. We could have said I won the race. Nobody would have told yeah. I was standing on the side of the race car, you know, but not on the roof like you're supposed to be. I'm on the side of it, but... And it was. Uh, it would have been a great pick. Yeah. I'm sure somebody out there has a pick. We need to. I was trying to find one. Throw some feelers out there. Hey, if anybody has a picture of that, of Tony's flipping a legend car at uh, Susky, please uh, get a hold of us. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I was uh, trying to find video of it. We had our GoPro, but um, the track usually takes video, but I don't know. It, it was such a weird night with so many guys going to the hospital. It was so late. I don't know if they were done videoing or i think the wreck in general was not something they wanted to show as much just the disqualified the the second place car that that was yeah you know intentionally wrecked the leader so it's pretty obvious it was something they weren't really proud to yeah to show off so that's how that went so we're still uh we're building a new chassis as we speak so can't thank uh adam meyer enough for the opportunity to get in the last car and still the chance to to build another one and get back at it so um should be fun. Hopefully, we'll be testing here soon to cool. get back after it. I guess that covers the Legend series. Yes, that's all the news we have in that series for now. But, but you had some more excitement after that. You did Pocono the week after yeah. in a uh, in a Gander Outdoor Camping World truck. Man, that's a that's a that's a mouthful to yeah, say, it is. isn't it? Yeah. So yeah, no, that was uh, that's the sketchiest part of the Legend flip, and that's probably why Dad was so worried. Was we knew we had Pocono the next week. And um, needless to say, some of the guys over with, with Joe Nemechek weren't too thrilled to hear that. And uh, my head didn't feel the greatest after that either. But um, for sure, it was an uh, important weekend. A lot of people, I think we had, what, 32? We had at least 30-some-odd people in there, yeah. yeah. Home home game for sure. And uh, so, yeah, so first time in a truck at Pocono. But uh, we had had some races there in the past in the Arca cars, some good, not not some not so good, and uh, no, it was a it was a fun time, and we were pretty good off off the truck in practice, and then just still getting used to things, and and then everybody made their mock qualifying runs, and we just didn't have time to, so that moved us back on the board. It didn't look too well, but we knew we were good for race trim, and uh, it was first your first time up on the spotter stand there in a little bit for practice at Pocono. Well, unfortunately, in true NASCAR tradition, they lost my uh, oh, drug yeah. work paperwork. Yes. So I couldn't get up to the stand the way I should have. Yeah, always something. So it, it is what it is. We, we'll get it worked out eventually. Um, talk about the experience with no Joe Nemechek, though. Yeah, it's been fun He's an so intense far. dude, man. Oh, he is. Yeah, it's been uh, flying from Texas to till, till Pocono and, and what we got coming in the future. I mean. Uh, a lot of great guys. I mean, he just reminds me so much of Schrader. Mm -hmm. um, maybe not. Maybe he's a little, I don't want to say more polished, but um, Schrader was so straightforward and uh, kind of in your face. If you didn't like it, he didn't care. He was going to tell you. <laughs> um, Joe is still very stern, but still a little more soft about it. And, uh, yeah. you know, now, now I had taken the right rear off of some of Schrader's cars before, so maybe that's why he was a little more stern than Joe. I haven't done it with Joe as much yet. Um but, uh, no, it's been great so far, and uh, he was running the 87 truck as a support truck, and uh, we uh, just learned a ton. Qua we missed qualifying. Yeah, I think we qualified 
20th or 22nd and just uh, wasn't handling well for the tunnel. And so that was a bummer. Getting to go to bed, kind of thinking, man, we should have been mm-hmm. top 16 at least and six spots back. It was hard to sleep over that. But um, ended up moving our way up to uh, 12th during the race and uh, had a lot of fun racing you know, heroes of mine that, that inspired me to get my trucks, like Jordan Anderson and um, Tyler Dipple and Gustine and them guys. That was pretty fun. Um, missed a lot of wrecks early on and just had a smooth day. Got to finish a race on Lake Texas. So, uh, yeah, no, it was a good time. I think you learned a lot, too. You got thrown in behind Johnny Sauter for a while oh, and yeah. some other um, regulars in the sport. Yeah. I mean, it just, it just seems like you had a good time with it. Uh, and a 12th place finish for your first time out in a truck is, is just uh, a milestone for you. And, and I guess it's going to get you some more uh, t- seat time coming up, correct? Yeah, yeah. it looks like uh, we had a, about a month off here, but it looks like we'll be going back to uh, Las Vegas. So uh, I've been out there before, but never actually racing out there uh, on that racetrack. So another mile and a half, depending where the sun's at, it's kind of like Texas, at least three and four. Texas one and two is unlike any other track other than maybe Kentucky. And so it'll be a learning curve there, really aero sensitive, but um, probably wide open in qualifying. So that should be fun. Um, But yeah, no, that should be, that should be a good time too. And uh, you know, with uh, Pocono, I wish we could bring all the guests we had there that weekend out to that race too, but it doesn't look like it. It It's a little expensive. Oh yeah, that's for sure. But we had uh, a lot of special guests that weekend in the infield. We had multiple campers and we had, uh, even some of our pit crew members from Martinsville at uh, on our truck team. And I'm glad you segued way into that because I think it's it's important to note um, early on in the uh, Tony Marakovich racing. Um, now you know we're you're kind of working on selling off some of those pieces and things. Yeah. But uh, some of the pieces you obviously can't sell off are some of the uh, pit crew members oh, yeah. who were willing to give their time and effort yeah. uh, to help you out. No, not getting rid of them. And uh, <laughs> I'm going to give the mic to one of them right now. Sounds good. And let you talk to them. Yeah, heck yeah. So uh, who we have coming on right now is uh, CJ McClure. He was our uh, gas man, ready to be gas man for the uh, 43 truck. How's it going, CJ? Welcome, oh, yeah. Welcome to the show. Good, good. How about you? Pretty good. So, uh, what's your, uh, let's tell everybody your involvement in racing. I know it's not necessarily NASCAR until we started working together, but I know you have a lot of other things going on that I think is really cool, and I'm sure a lot of these guys will too. Um, so, always been interested in cars, and it's it's interesting that my dad, with being with your dad, is involved in an auto sport. So, it's 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 nice to be around yet another principle and 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 another uh oh yeah type of attitude so Mm -hmm. it's 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 kind of fun to see organized sports yeah and but uh but yeah we i mean more and more into building like jeeps and off-roading but yeah you're in a couple different things so you have the a lot of street stuff a lot of yep street off-roading and yeah have the audi yeah and then i'm trying to work into we've only drag raced so far but okay it'd be fun to see what else the car can do oh yeah but that's cool yeah 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 that's what i always enjoy and i know there's a lot of fans out there that that enjoy that just because it's something that they can relate to as Mm -hmm. much as we all love nascar it's uh so above so many of us with the the funding that it takes and really nowadays i I hear it a lot people don't feel like they're relating to the cars because it doesn't seem like it's a stock car and um, the cup cars definitely are not so um I personally enjoy, you know, having our group filled with guys that that are into it and and in their own way, you know, mm-hmm. to have street cars and to be able to do drag racing and maybe someday you're interested in, in doing track days and things like oh, that. Oh yeah, and, for sure. Yeah, yeah. So, so definitely doing things with your hands, kind of guy. You know, mm-hmm. um, a lot of the racers that I'm with now, I mean, they're they're racers, but they're uh, nowadays in NASCAR, it's more important to be a good marketer than a good mechanic. Yeah. And uh, sometimes it's just it's just not the crowd I roll with. So um, <laughs> it's cool to have, in yeah. my opinion, some some real racers involved. And uh, so so tell us a little bit about the Audi. I know you just wrapped that, and it's looking looking slick now. So yeah, we uh, went ahead and tried to do our first vinyl wrap, which was uh, it was interesting. It's it's definitely not a 
not an easy process, at least f at first. Mm -hmm. um, uh, definitely a lot of techniques, a lot of YouTube watching. Oh yeah. As far as the rap goes, but it, it's it's on now. It looks it looks awesome. So yeah. it's bright orange. Okay. I yeah. Mean, <laughs> you oh, can't yeah. miss it now. Yeah. If you, if you if it, it used to be silver, but you could hear it. Okay. Now you you see it sometimes before you hear it. Yeah. Depending on where you're at. Blink of an eye. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But yeah. But yeah. it's it's good. I'm uh we actually just had an argument before coming in about how much power the car makes. Oh yeah. So yeah. that's you <laughs> and that's uh yes, your your wife Jessie. Yeah, my wife Jessie. So. Also a tire changer for us. Yeah, she was a rear tire changer. Oh yeah. Yeah. She'd still like to to get on the gun. Oh yeah. I, mean. <laughs> I hope we can have some opportunities to do it. Oh again. yeah. That's Even if it's another practice, honestly. Oh, yeah. I mean it was yeah. Just to get the nitrogen and hearing the sounds. Oh so. yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, yeah, that'd be awesome. good, but Yeah. That's the thing. It's it's a lot of people there's there's a lot of guys out there that whether it's dirt racing or lo local late models um almost enjoy that more rather than moving up the ladder just for the simple fact of being able to do it with the people you like being oh, around yeah. for sure. Yeah. You know, um you know, it's just uh not that drivers nowadays don't, you know, like the the teams that they're with but at the end of the day it's not who you grow up with it's not who you're around it's not local um you know you kind of sign up to be with that team and when your contract's over you move on so it's mm. not uh nearly as fun as kind of going on the road with your buddies and and things like that so i knew i'd enjoy it even uh even on bad days it'd be fun and um <laughs> yep. everybody knows the martinsville story not qualifying but uh. still a blast i mean we all had a it was a great time, I hope, for you guys as it was for me. Oh, it was great. It was Running hectic. around the track yeah. with our chickens with our heads cut off. It was <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everyone definitely saw us. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. if they didn't know you, they know you now. Oh, yeah. Funny, funny story. It's I wish you guys could, could be with me through tech uh, nowadays because um, going to Texas and going to Pocono, uh, we definitely made a statement there. Um Actually, I think one of Hamlin's guys came up to one of our crew guys now that with Nemco, now that I've been driving for him, because uh, I'm not sure if you remember, but for the for the fans, everybody listening, we actually pushed the truck through the cup garage, which is kind of forbidden. All the garages are supposed to be kept separate while we were trying to get to tech. And, you know, there's if there's no officials, like the guys that do it every week, they know where to go. We were like, okay, tech starts over there. We're just going to use the shortest way around to get there. So technically we are supposed to go the whole way out on a pit road and go down. Well, we're pushing this thing through the cup garage. Cup garage are, guys are going in and out. Mm -hmm. And uh, Hamlin's pushing his stuff down. And everybody's looking like, why is there a truck? And, you know, they're going to look at the name on it. So that was one way to get exposure. Oh, yeah. Is they, they don't forget it. They're like, <laughs> man, those are those guys that push their truck through our garage. You know? <laughs> and, uh they were. They almost thought it was funny because they could tell. They were looking. They could tell we were. Might as well. We could have been dirt racers, oh, street yeah. racers, um, and we didn't care either. Nobody. Bunch of misfits. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nobody was batting an eye. <laughs> we were like, we're going this way, and you know, because we didn't know. It's not that mm -hmm. we were cocky and didn't care. We were just like, hey, you know, sounds simple to us. We have got to get the truck over here. We're gonna push it over here. So. Point A to point B. It, it's yeah. Way. yeah. Exactly, and and. Uh, the guys now, I, I always walk through tech now with the Nemco guys just for fun. Just because now I'm just pushing on the truck, I'm smiling, and I know we're going to pass. And, uh, <laughs> it's not like we're going through 50 times like we did with our truck. And Sweating. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> they they smile and how things go and you still have your truck and with a smile on their face. I'm like, you really want me to bring that thing back here? Because <laughs> I'll gotta, do it. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So... No, that was a blast, and um, it's pretty cool to, to have tech guys uh, know your name and things like that. I mean, mm -hmm. honestly, uh, even if the if the name's outside of the driver's door, I, I really don't know if I'd have the relationship with that side of the garage. doesn't seem like other drivers do. I never see them walking through tech and um, having so many conversations like, like I've had with the officials um, ever since then. So luckily, it uh, there were some positives out of that. Oh and, yeah, and I think um, I think after running well at Texas, I think they saw, you know, why we were trying hard as heck. You know, they mm. didn't know who we were, so probably thinking where do they get the confidence? But 
at least I knew that if I could get out there, it'd be, it'd be a fun time. Yeah. You know, but, uh, no, it was a blast doing that. I hope, uh, that's why I've been kind of bugging, uh, bugging everybody, uh, you know, our crew guys, my dad, and our sponsors to try to let us get some kind of dirt deal or local asphalt deal together so we could do it again, because mm-hmm. I got to get back to, to wrenching something for sure. Oh, yeah. But, um, so, so yeah, so how was, uh, you took, you took the Audi out not too long ago, right, to it, to try to drag race? Oh, it was a valid attempt, I would oh, say. Yeah. I mean, that was valid as ours, right? To Martinsville. <laughs> That's true. I, <laughs> I made it out valid. onto the track. Oh yeah. <laughs> but uh, just had a whole mess of work done to it. Uh, clutch, flywheel, front mount intercooler. It's straight piped now. It has okay. a whole brand new tune. It runs on race fuel. Yeah. So I was excited to see. Oh yeah. How fast that could actually go, at least on a drag strip. It's not really a drag car, but yeah. Um, first run, all excited. I didn't want to launch the car, so rolled, rolled okay. down from first into second, gun second, and then go to shift and then have no gears. Oh, yeah. And then go to shift to third and have no gears Still again. Still no gear. Yep. So oh. coast the way down the track, have no idea what's going on. Yeah. I mean, the last time I experienced no gears was when I had no clutch. Oh, yeah. So after you spend – couple thousand dollars on a clutch and a flywheel you mm. don't want that to happen immediately yeah i mean <laughs> exactly so it was a little scary oh yeah 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 so. that's that's part of it though it's it like, is it's yeah always, that's uh we've had that in the dirt days and the pavement days i mean when we were testing our truck before martinsville i had that thing set so low and i was cocky as heck with the setup that we had in it <laughs> um thought i had the best springs on it thought i had the height set perfect and I think to a point I did because when we got to Martinsville and I raised it, we were way too high. So I should have kept it where we were. But Motor Mile has this uh, – they don't have a tunnel. So the haulers come down onto the track over turn one, and there's a bit of a dip there. And it's just mm-hmm. kind of different than most racetracks, whereas the dips kind of go with the race trucks or the race vehicles. Um, you're not really going completely against them. Maybe Pocono tunnel turn a little bit. But that place uh, didn't know it. So I go into there, I think uh, a couple of laps I wasn't really digging too hard, first ones, so uh, truck really wasn't setting, setting in the corner too much, and I think it was like lap eight or something. Drove down pretty hard and, and bottomed out like crazy. And a lot of people don't know that the we run so low that some of the older um, uh, housings right behind the engine at where the flywheel is are cut open. And so the flywheel is actually sticking out like an inch in, in open air. Um, nowadays the cases and the housings, the new ones are made real slick and, um, they're not just wide open. So we literally bottomed out the flywheel and grinded all the teeth off, uh, on the racetrack <laughs> and, um, come back in, make some adjustments was like, yeah, I think we bottomed out a little bit, you know, had no idea how bad we did mm-hmm. and we go to start it and obviously there's nothing for the starter to hit. So <laughs> There we are, push starting it the rest of the day, trying to get some test laps in, and uh, boy, you learn a lot. Oh, yeah. It's been fun. I mean, that's kind of why my idea, my original idea, was to be getting a late model and to be just running short track late model stuff and to try to get used to pavement driving and pavement setups. And uh, then we all got the bright idea to get a truck, because why not? (laughs) Yeah. So, because praise Dale. Yeah, because praise Dale. Yes, do it for Dale. <laughs> so, oh yeah. So, uh, no. So it's been fun. Hopefully, we can get back into something like that. Do you have any? Have you ever thought of like track days or just focusing on like dragging and that right now? I, I'm open to anything. Yeah. We're actually possibly in October. Jesse wants to roll race my car at Pocono. Oh, well, all right. That'd so, awesome. if you, are you familiar with roll racing? Not really. No. Let's, so let's tell the fans about it. So at Pocono specifically, and, and really anywhere they do it, but so for Pocono, you, they have you, uh, you basically, not coast, but you just cruise around the track, so turn one, turn two, turn three. Okay. They have two cones at the end of turn three, and they just let you floor your car the whole way down the straightaway. Oh, okay. I and then you. they And then you have to let off, and then they let you coast around. It's like being on a Hot Wheels track with yeah, the, with the cool. wheels. Oh, yeah. I got gotcha. you. So, and, and people do it in their street cars. There's all kinds of different things yeah. there. So 
That's awesome. So yeah, it's not quite as hard on your car as far as yeah as as zero to sixty times. I but wonder because what what do you think they'll start you at like forty five? Uh, I think it's either forty or forty five. Yeah, okay. you have to hit the cones at that speed, yep. and then okay. you're allowed to do whatever the hell you want. And so, is it like a single car timed through that zone, or are you like it's, double? It's head to head. All right, yeah. now that's awesome. There, there's classes, so we'll be in the sedan class, and okay. then yeah, you just flying through right beside somebody else that's going awesome. 160, 170 yeah. miles an hour. I've never never heard of that before. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, don't. I'm glad they're doing it down the back stretch because turn two wall hurts. So <laughs> don't hit that one. Turn three no, doesn't feel good. They either. don't want amateur drivers <laughs> going 160 around that yeah, in their no, street cars. Be great. Yeah. 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 Uh, that's I like turn one. I mean, it's scary as heck because it's at oh, the it's, end oh, of the longest. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's, that's a banked one. And you would think that I mean that's the longest straightaway in NASCAR. That one right there. Mm -hmm. And um, you're at your top speed of the whole lap going into turn one and. You'd think that'd be the scariest, and, and I'm sure it is, but I, I guess it's not as scary as turn two and three for me because it's the only one I haven't spun in yet. So I'm confident. <laughs> I'm good in that one, yeah. So, no, that all sounds good, and uh, well, great. Yeah, yeah hopefully we'll get to do it. I just fixed my clutch today. So. Awesome. At right. least I think I did. Yeah. I <laughs> See, that's, that's just great. That's what I like trying to find more guys like you guys, and uh, I know the fans enjoy it because there's so many, especially our following, um, Middletown and across PA as far as uh, just local racing because again I think um, NASCAR is working really hard to get the Gen 7 to be a stock you know closer to a stock car it's mm -hmm. just I, I understand it's really hard now to do to have such a stock looking race car but keep the safety in it yeah um, there's a lot of tracks that will do like New Smyrna in Florida and other short local tracks will even do like you know uh, what's it called? They'll, you bring your own stock car, your yeah, home like car. Yeah, track day. Yeah. yeah, whatever you even brought home. I mean, there's guys that show up to watch the race and bring their minivan, <laughs> and we'll race out on the track. And it's yeah, like a head-to-head. -head, kind of like what you said there with that Pocono. Um, and there's been some wrecks, some guys, <laughs> Mustangs, and uh, they hit the concrete walls that you see the airbags going. You're like, oh man, this is you know this might not be good. <laughs> and it kind of reminds everybody <laughs> why we have to do what we do. Because mm -hmm. I would love to just get in the S10 right now and <laughs> go to a dirt track and start slinging it. But yeah. um, it is, the body doesn't fall off. yeah, as, as long as the body doesn't <laughs> fall off, yeah. I mean, but we take so for granted the roll cage and the foam that we we have and the, the seats and things like that. But at the end of the day, we're able to make these race cars do some pretty amazing thing. I think that we can find a better way to, to have a stock car mm -hmm. with all that in it. Um it might be expensive. That's the only thing. I mean, IMSA, those, like the 24 Hours of Daytona, the sports car races, mm -hmm. those are, you know, very similar to street cars. Um, the bodies on them and the, the chassis that they run. Now, I'm sure some guys in that industry would think, are you crazy? There's, you know, Harry Hyde, right? Nothing, nothing stock about a stock car. Yeah, nothing stock about yeah. a stock car. Yeah, nothing, <laughs> none of those cars are even close to the real cars. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure they would say. But compared to NASCAR, mm -hmm. they are a lot closer um, for example, they have a door, but, you know, and, get in and out of the car. yes, yeah. says Brian's, yes, yeah, Brian says you can get in and out, and so it's, uh, that's the thing, I think we can do a better job there, and, I mean, the problem is, is if it is more expensive and more time consuming to create something like that, that's true, but I think the biggest issue in the sport right now is the fact that we need 10 different cars, mm -hmm. because we run so many different tracks, and they, the rules, there's too many rules, but at the same time, they need to find a way to cut down on that. I mean, the road course guys will only build two to four a year. Mm -hmm. They're they're running all road courses. They don't, you know, they can make their changes between control arms and springs and and be good. I mean, obviously, if they wreck stuff, they're they're going to be building new ones like any of us would. Um, but if they do keep it clean all year, they don't have to go into the year with eight different chassis. Um, so that's a big thing. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we can do that because I know there's a large part of the fan base that we're missing out on because they just can't relate to it. And well, what about the like factory, like the a Mustang GT350R? Yeah. Or like a Porsche 911 GT3RS? Yeah. That's a, that's a factory exactly. race car. Yeah. And if they can, I don't know, do they do they have roll cages in them? So from my understanding, the U.S. government regulations, you can't sell a car. With a roll cage in it or oh, a roll a bar problem. in it, because it it impedes 
rear view or okay. whatever. And there's probably some other th- regulations behind it, but yeah. so that's that's my understanding. Okay. But I know like a, when you order a Porsche, you can you, you're you're not getting a back seat when you buy it from the factory. Yeah. It already has the roll bar mounts, oh. and then you can just go to Porsche and order your roll bar, now and we're then you talking. just bolt it in at home. There we go. Yeah. But, that, that's... So I'm sure that limits what the the stock car. Mm-hmm attempt is exactly yeah i never knew that that's so the government's our problem too then huh? no. <laughs> the government's um, a lot of people's problems yeah, yeah yeah so that's the thing it's like if we could get to that point somehow i mean because it's just there were so many more people involved in the sport and there still are i mean you know 20 years ago teams only had 20 employees 30 employees now hendrick motorsports has 500 so a lot of people will think okay well there's a lot more people involved nowadays well there are but there was a lot of people involved in the sport who maybe had regular jobs and things like you, your mm-hmm. middle class, your average guys, like everybody wasn't a professional and I'm not knocking on the ones that are, that are, that are in the sport. However, it's healthier for the sport when you can have more people that are just giving and not taking anything at all, mm-hmm. just period, whether it's a paycheck, anything like there were so many guys that would sacrifice time, volunteer and come to the races and help build these things. Back when you could slap a sheet metal body on it, you mm-hmm. know, you know, again, Days of Thunder style. I know I got to get out of the past. That was thirty years ago, twenty years ago. <laughs> but yes, uh huh. Yes, Brian. Brian says build it in your barn. We need to get back to that. There's, yeah. There's a lot more I people agree. who are, and there. I mean, there's guys like you. There's a lot of people out there who physically can do this stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, oh yeah. And a lot of great minds that we're not using. Because the rule book is so tight, and it's like you need to have, excuse me, NASA engineers to figure it out. Um, if you come with, I mean, we weren't even trying to bring a truck, you know, creative with any nicks or knacks on it so that it'll make us faster. Uh-huh. We were just trying to qualify. <laughs> but <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, there were pieces <laughs> falling off. But, you know, nowadays, if you're four months out of date, um, it's just not going to happen. You're mm-hmm. not going to get through. And uh, and it's not for a speed reason. It's for either a safety reason or just, I think, NASCAR being afraid of some other team complaining because we didn't have to update like they did. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. You can't – it's getting to the point to where if you're not full-time in it, you can't be in it. Mm-hmm. And you need those local guys. like They're kind of like the road course ringers or some of the short track guys that go to Bristol. I mean, there were like – there used to be so many cars going to Bristol. Just because it was close to the North Carolinas, and it mm. was a short track, and there were guys that were late model guys, not really in NASCAR, but felt like, hey, we build short track cars all year, let's put a cup car together. Mm-hmm. Um, I found out last night, I didn't even know this, the first inaugural Brickyard 400 at Indianapolis for NASCAR, 80 cars oh, signed cool. up for that. Jeez. I had no idea. Why? Because everybody was like, they're going to Indy. Let's build a cup car. Yeah. You know, we might not even be close, but let's try. Some of those, some of those series, but the, the and, purse for that race was, like, incredible. Yes, and, and Brian here was saying about the, the purse for that race being incredible, too. That's how it used to be for Daytona. I mean, we're talking 50, 55 guys, 10 to 12 guys mm-hmm. going home. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, those guys put a lap down at least. Oh, yeah. You know, and nowadays. It's still, still worth a shot. It's yeah, still fun. Exactly. We're in last place to get $100,000. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and um, that's the thing nowadays where guys, like, you can't even try. Like, there are guys who are willing to work all winter to get to Daytona and time out 50th and not even be close to making a race, mm-hmm. but they're going to damn try again next year. Mm-hmm. That's what the sport needs. Mm-hmm. Instead of having, I don't, you know, not to bang on starting parks, but short fields, uh, news, we're cutting the fields down to, to 38 now in Xfinity. Or I'm sorry, 36. We're at 38. Um, I think Cup's coming down to 38. Ten years ago, it used to be 43 and mm-hmm. 40. And we still had guys that we were sending home. Um, so it's just as crazy as it is to see how many how big teams are nowadays, there are still less and less people getting involved in it um, because it's just too, too out of the mindset if you're not doing it every day. Um, mm-hmm. And that's what dirt racing really has going on for it right now is the amount of people involved and street racing and um, – they're really focused on trying to get the next generation in it. Well, you got to get the next generation of car guys in it. Got it? Cause I agree. I, yeah. I mean, I went to tech school and I went through auto mechanics and um, a lot of kids, 
you know, thought it was cool to be involved in NASCAR and that, but they still were clueless because mm-hmm. they don't, they can't relate to it. So yeah. they don't care to talk about it. They're talking about imports. And well, it's also on this cars. pedestal. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's like an unobtainable thing. Mm-hmm. So they don't even think it's worth, it's like almost what Formula One would be to a lot of us, mm-hmm. you know, just because it's really not even in this country. And yet here we are with NASCAR, you know, supposed to be American stock car racing. Out of everybody, we should be trying like heck to be a part of it and, and believe that we deserve to be. Mm-hmm. But you're right. There's so many kids that now um, just don't want to feel accepted, don't feel like deserve it. And these are the car guys, just like they were 50 years ago, were wrenching on stuff every day, building mm-hmm. stuff, thinking of new things. Um, that's what we need. So hopefully uh, they can uh, – get towards that direction so we can get more guys like you in here cj i agree <laughs> get us on the racetrack more and uh we also have his wife jesse in the house she's shy though i will i will say that this is our rear tire changer Let's see if she wanted to, to have a quick word or anything thanks for having me there we go there's jesse so uh okay jesse so you were never at a nascar race or were you before martinsville think so doesn't seem so So what was your first uh first impressions of of it well there's a lot going on Mm -hmm. especially behind the scenes you know you don't always see what's behind the scenes until you're in it Mm -hmm. so i didn't know what was going on back there what needed to be done before this and that yeah oh yeah definitely a lot of a lot of different things going on were you ever at a dirt race at all or anything like that or yeah, I used to go a lot with my dad. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she used to go a lot. That's cool, yeah. That's where everybody starts, back to my tracks, my roots. So, uh, no, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, hopefully we can get everybody. That That's what we were hoping to have the story on that weekend, um, to have uh, husband and wife over the wall for us. It's pretty <laughs> awesome. Uh, one change in the rear tires and one fuel in the car or truck, and um, we are going to get there. We have our... Uh, pit sign I'll, I'll post a picture of it later and post a link that we were going to use on at martinsville and kind of cool we were getting everybody here to sign it and uh got a little montage with the trip there and um, got the big old 43 on it because who knows what will be next time <laughs> we get something together but um i know there's a lot of people listening that messaged me and reached out about offering for help and, and being a part of it and i appreciate that and hopefully we can get more people involved um a lot of great, again, people out there that want to be involved. And then traveling's, you know, part of it. Um, it's just a lot, of, especially in the truck series, racing on Friday and Saturday. You kind of got to get there Thursday, Thursday morning. I forget what time we had to be there for, I think we left Wednesday, Wednesday evening. Um, for Martinsville, oh, Martinsville, I believe. Yeah, I think we had to be there like 8 or something like that. Yeah, yeah, Brian yeah. here remembers. Had to be there 8. And uh, driver's meeting was 8 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, yeah, I actually missed, missed the rookie meeting. Would have got penalized had we qualified without it starting to back anyhow. But we were trying to get through tech. So, but uh, no, that sounds great here. So, um, yeah, trying to look at our notes here. So, um, and I apologize to everybody uh, listening. We usually have more mics. And we had a couple of technical difficulties here. So, I wanted to get everybody's opinion. Um, everybody here on the uh, Natalie Decker incident that happened at Bristol. Um so I, I guess uh, we'll see. There's a lot of different ways to look at this. And um, I, got, I got to get our spotter in on this because it's really. You didn't even get to say goodbye to Jesse. I just want to thank Jesse. I was going to thank them. Yes, Brian says I didn't say goodbye to Jesse. Well, before we get started, I think, it, I think it's important to note that um, Jesse also had to earn her spot. Oh, that's true. We gotta I mean, she Jessie just didn't credit. get handed a, a rear tire changer spot. She, right. she she was up against about three or four other guys on the yes, team. Yes, that's important. Let everybody that know same that. job, and she just happened to be faster than everybody else with the guns. She was. We did a practice. We did multiple practices uh, with the air guns, um, and uh, she's very involved with CJ and mechanically inclined, so that, that helped, but never touched a pit gun before, right? And um, I had, what, two or three guys – lined up to yep. uh, to do it and when i hit cj over with the fuel can i forget how that conversation started about getting here involved but uh, i think i think maybe you picked one up yeah. <laughs> oh yeah brian pushed for it i think and uh said heck why not let's see and she was faster than all three guys there it is it was great it was uh okay 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> CJ, yeah. CJ was mentioning. So just throws Tristan under the bus. That's awesome. Yes. So over over one of the first practices, CJ was saying uh, she's, she's kind of battling Tristan and my brother here because he was going to be changed in a front tire, and she got the rear tire changed pretty fast and was tapping her foot, waiting for Tristan to get done. And, and uh, it was pretty awesome. I was excited. I thought we honestly had a dream team going. And if we could only get through tech. It would have been a dream team, all right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, um, no, for sure. And uh, so, yeah, so thanks to everybody involved. I hope we can get that dream team on the track here soon. Anything. Track we'll days. See. 24 hours of lemons. we got to build one of those cars. But, uh, yeah, CJ's talked about it. Yeah, we got, hell, we were even talking about doing lawnmower racing. Yeah. So. Yes. So, yeah. 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 <laughs> what do you call that, CJ? Fracture 500. Fracture 500. Ah, <laughs> uh, I like that. Uh, that will be public. I will. Uh, we'll, we'll get that. We'll post Don't that. Worry. Oh yeah. I, I'm busy with school. Okay. Well, we will get that. That's gonna Long be. Long said nothing race. on fire. I'll be happy. Yes. Everything stayed. We got fire. We got fire crew hired. Be there for that one. But. Okay. Okay. So we'll, we'll just about ready Let's to Let's open up this, this can up. of worms. Yeah. We'll try to be quick with this one. We know we've been on it here for a while, guys. And uh, I think this is probably one of the more entertaining things for the fans. Um, oof. There's a lot of – there's a good – some people looking on the positive end of it and trying to stay positive for Natalie. And then I feel bad for her because there's a lot of not-so-positive things going on media-wise about Bristol. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess one of the negative things that came out of that is uh, Kevin Hamblin, longtime driver, crew chief, big name in the sport, um, was spotting for Natalie, and, and it basically caused them to just walk away from that particular team. Yeah. It, uh, which is sad, but it just, it, I, I guess it, it shows that uh, some people were get in places because of who they are, not what they are, because of what they are, not who they are. Yeah. Um. And, and and I believe someday maybe she she she'll, she'll make a great driver one day I hope, mm-hmm. and maybe she was pushed a little too quickly into a series where she yeah exactly. is going to struggle. Mm-hmm. Um. So I, I I hope the best for her. I hope she gets back to you know to the roots and doesn't get too frustrated with it. Um. But long story short, you can't let your ego get ahead of where you are. Um, talent wise either yeah exactly that's the thing it's it's a tough deal and um you you just again you have to have the right people behind you and and do not think you're finished when your autograph line is is half a mile long and you're in cut like Mm -hmm. and i'm only saying that because uh i really don't think a lot of it's her fault it's it's leadership it's mentorship i've been blessed to have two awesome bosses in ken schrader and joni machek um, but before you even have the opportunity to use people like that, you have to appreciate them or else they'll never help you. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if that's the problem. I've had some people tell me that, um, you know, I think, uh, for, for what she's done in some of the past, I think she definitely has a talent and it's not my business to judge, but at the end of the day, there's visibly, there's been mistakes and then visibly there's been good days where she obviously has something there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, and the, the only thing I can say here, and it's just in a conversation I've had with some of our crew guys and my dad, um, that would help her is, and if, if I was in a conversation with her, you know, this is the only thing I'd say. And I kind of did say, we were talking for a short bit after Texas, she was mad that night cause she had got taken out, um, and, uh, started that little rivalry with Spencer Boyd, um, if she does have mentorship and leadership there, she has to start listening to it. She has to start asking for it. It's from what I've noticed, every time she climbs out of the truck, wreck or not, none of the crew guys really, like there's not much of a conversation there or the officials even. And David Gilliland owns the team. I mean, the, mm-hmm. the man is experienced. And it sounds like if they're able to have Kevin Hamlin as a spotter, also the spotter, spotter for Tyler Reddick, been in NASCAR for such a long time. Um, she does have good people around her, and I and I hate to say this, but this is what we were talking about. Um, she's uh, seems like in and out. There's a lot of 
talking and, and studying going on between her and uh, relatives, relationships, relatives. And as that's great and all, I do the same thing. But my mm-hmm. dad also knows that when I'm at the racetrack, it's something that he hasn't done before. So I listen to Joni and the check. When it comes to marketing and business, dad is there for me and it's awesome. And we're both learning together. But when it comes to the racing stuff, you have to listen to your team. Do not go back and talk to your family about every little thing that's happening and what you're trying to figure out. Mm-hmm. That's what your team's for. That's what David Gilliland is for. That's what Joe Nemechek is for. You need to listen to those guys because as much as you love your parents or your you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, you know, that's the thing. You kind of have to shut them out for race day. They don't know. They have not raced. They've never driven anything. You mm-hmm. have to listen to the guys who have, or the guys who have been studying it, spotting for it, um, for mm-hmm. a long time. Um, and that's the only thing I've noticed is honestly, she is in very good equipment. She's got very good people around her, and um, so there's really just not much reason for this much confusion to go on. And I mean, it makes you it makes you feel bad for her because you know there's got to be something there, or else um, she won't make it through some of the races she has. Exactly. She she got there. She got where she was because of talent of some kind. Of some you, you kind. Just, yes. You just can't yeah. take a whole you know million dollars and walk into the sport. You, or you can, but you're not going to be. You're only going to be here a million dollars worth. Mm-hmm. You know when and when that's dry, you're done. Exactly. Um, it, but it takes true talent to go beyond that and make the next million. Yeah. You so have let, to. I, let, yeah, I hate to beat her up too much, but you know I I, I hope the best for her and hope it all works out. But she's got to get back to the basics. Um, and maybe it's a trust issue with her team. I mean, th- that could be yeah. because obviously, especially a spotter, yeah, spotter driver relationship has got to be trust foundation from there yeah. and build up. Exactly. Listening to the radio, it's like there is a huge void, and you don't want to pin it on anybody. Mm-hmm. But I mean, one of two things is happening. It's either she is not going to them for advice, and she needs to be. She mm-hmm. needs to appreciate that, and you have to get the ego out of the way. Exactly. I've, I've heard that, sadly, from some people um, in the garage, that that's the gist that they get, um, that they're not really good enough for that. Anybody in the garage, every week, I will take advice from, because they are there every week. I am not. <laughs> oh, by <laughs> all know? means. I constantly ask questions. Even, I think, with um, – Joe Nemechek has a young young man on board. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Ryan. Yes, Ryan, yeah. Um, who spots – just started spotting for Joe in his port truck. Yep. And I was I was asking advice from him, you know, and he's oh, yeah. like 19 years old. Yeah, so exactly. you, you can learn from everybody in the sport. Yeah. No matter what age they are, no matter what position they are. Yeah, exactly. That's if they're in the sport longer than you have, then it's just that's the thing. And so, um, hopefully, she's trying to exploit that and, and ask as many questions as possible. Mm-hmm. If not, it's on her. Um, or it could be just the team not being comfortable with her and, and not offering that advice. Um, again, in my opinion, you always have to dig for it. Don't just expect people to tell you everything. Um, but who knows? I'd, I'd hope they're not in that way. Their other drivers seem to do very well, and their rookies mm-hmm. as well. Um, but that's the thing. It's definitely it's not a funding issue, and it's not an equipment issue. It's it's some kind of relationship issue, and hopefully they get it figured out. Um it's something we, if you're on social media and you follow this stuff, it's something we're forced to talk about because it's all that's been talked about. Exactly. I mean, it's it almost overrides some cup news every now and then. It's when this kind of thing happens, and uh, I'm sure a lot of you listening have seen what happened at Bristol, um, and it's just uh, I wish there was something better to talk about <laughs> from that race, but that was definitely the highlight of it. Well, there's some positives. I mean, we can talk about. Um you want to talk about Tyler Dippo a little bit? Yes. This and is it kind of explains something there that uh, he got caught up in last week. It yes, really yeah. wasn't his fault. So it's, maybe it's you weird. can clarify that for us. Yeah. So this, uh, if people haven't heard the news today, they might think this would be a negative story. But it actually turns out to be a positive in, in some ways. Um, yeah, Tyler Dippo was suspended last week. Uh, he's, I believe he's from Middletown, New York. I know he lives up there. I'd, um, I've kind of been following him a little bit for a while. and um, he was suspended last week right before the Canada race and, um, they went and they didn't exactly let out the reasons, but apparently there's a police report. He got caught. He was in an 80 and a 65. So he got pulled over on the way home from the dirt track up there. 
Orange County. We've been there a couple of times. I raced there mm-hmm. once, and um, so he was. There was a friend with him, and and um, there was a book bag in the back that apparently had a prescription bottle in it. I forget exactly. I was. I saw Adderall, but I'm not good. I shouldn't say that. I didn't see it on the official report. I believe that's what Bob Bob Pocker said, but I'm not sure. Um, and uh, but the biggest thing is, it just wasn't a prescription to his name. And so it wasn't his friends either. So they both were in a car that had a you know bottle of prescription drugs that was neither of theirs. So right, they had to they had to do something. They had no proof whether he had this legally or not. Obviously, if it was not legal, it would be a big deal. Um, so he got charged for I think a misdemeanor seventh degree, which is the lowest you can get in New York. And um, sadly, miss had to miss last last weekend, but. Uh, his uh, court date was this past Wednesday, and uh, they they he did a drug test. He was very cooperative and did a drug test for that drug, nothing in his system, and he was able to get his friend, who had that prescription drug in that backpack in his car, to come to prove that I was somebody who was associated with, not a nobody that was stolen from um, or anything like that. So the the friend came as a witness and said, "Yes, that was mine. He did not take it. It was just in you know I left it in mm. his car." Um, so all the charges were dismissed. Uh, sadly, Tyler got a really bad rap over the last couple you know last week or so, and I guess he had a you know I think a speeding ticket earlier in the year down in Virginia or something like that, and just uh, got hammered really really hard for it, and uh, kind of feel bad for him. And then, yet, there's some people that think, well, you were doing 15 miles over the speed limit, so there was something wrong there. But, I mean, I feel like compared to... <laughs> yeah, 15 to, miles over the speed yeah, limit. A lot of people, that's not that bad. I, I hate to say that, but I get passed by guys way, way worse than that. Not that I've never done that, for sure. Oh, yeah, no. I test drive cars at 110. That's yes, about, yeah, exactly. that's where I'm at. Yeah, so <laughs> could have been worse. I don't, I don't think... Yeah. Yeah. As I guess, Benny Parsons would say, that's like hanging a guy for <laughs> shoplifting. <laughs> I guess long story short, his name's cleared. I hope the best for the kid. He, he he's a talented young man. So oh yeah, uh, going forward, I hope this is it, and uh, we we trump it dead, and he can just get on with his career from here. So. Exactly. NASCAR did reinstate him today, so that's cool. So he will be back in Vegas. Um, I was hoping he wouldn't have to do the road to recovery program. I don't know exactly what all that entails. But obviously he was clean, so luckily, as soon as they did this, everything was dismissed, reinstated. So that's cool. NASCAR had to do what they did. And there are positives that come out of that. Uh, AJ Allmendinger. Oh yeah. A success story coming out of the re, uh, the, the um, road to recovery. Road to recovery. Mm-hmm. Um, Jeremy Mayfield. Not so much. Not so much. That's a complicated camera. Yeah. Can of so right there. you know, it, it's not it's not a bad thing. To, to, to take and do, you yeah. know, and uh, hopefully he gets he Like I said, he's a talented young man. He'll be fine going forward, so. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he'll be good. He'll it'll be fun seeing him at Vegas and uh, enjoy enjoy racing him. I mean, he's uh, definitely got a lot of talent, and he's uh, honestly out of his team, the three trucks over there, he's been the front one usually. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, Gustine and Spencer Board are great, but he has been putting that O2 truck up near the top 10, we had a good battle at Pocono. I think he was the next car truck I had to get. We were 12th. I was chasing that freaking truck for <laughs> ever trying to get to him. And I uh, got around Gus and got around Jordan, but could not get to Tyler. And um, So, um, so yeah, no. In other news, uh, we'll be wrapping up here. Just throwback weekend here in Darlington. Um, always a fun time throwback schemes i would like to see the cars and, and let's just hope the cars are real throwback cars exactly. this time and not just um toss back cars toss backs, yes you know with paint schemes that are like five years old instead of like let's, let's go back to the way it used to be when paint schemes were like from the 50s and the 60s you know I, I hope we see some of that back again exactly it's supposed to they actually like darlington it was supposed to be a 1990s throwback like they, they set that, and it was supposed to be 1990s themed. You got a whole 10 years to pick from. I mean, you should be able to. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> you know, um, 
but it's always been like this. Like they had last year's was the eighties, I think, and and uh, Jimmy Johnson got a bit of a rap because his team did the two thousand twelve car he ran when he won the two hundredth race for Hendrick. You know, six years old. That's not a throwback. That's and of a course, the back. city Chevrolet is being run by. Oh, William Byron, Cole Trickle. William Byron, Cole Thank Trickle you. car. That's gonna be a good one. So we know what I'll be doing all weekend. Oh yeah, days of Wheeler not be in the Gant. Gant spun out. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good impersonation. <laughs> oh yeah. So, um, okay. What is your quick rattle it off? What's your favorite throwback? What is your favorite throwback paint scheme that you would do from seventy-five to ninety-five? What would you do? Uh, seventy-five to ninety-five. Yes. What's the oh, best man, paint scheme? Killing me. I know it's a broad. That, that's that's it's a lot of that's awesome. huge. Yeah. Um. I'd have to go with one of the Kale Yarbrough schemes if I could. Hardy's. Like a Hardy scheme, I think okay. would be kind of cool. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Number oh, eleven. Remember okay. that? Yeah, yeah, Ron yeah. Over here said the Wood Brothers. Twenty-one. Oh yeah. I agree there with that is. one. Yeah. Oh yeah. So we got the the Wood Brothers in the house. I got um. Oof. Yeah, that's definitely hard. Yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty broad there, man. There's a lot of good paint schemes in there. Maybe we should just do the '90s. I will say this: if it wasn't the '90s, I always had a special place uh, for uh, Bobby Allison's Miller High Life kind of goldish car. Okay. And a lot like it was kind of a. Some people felt like it was a boring color, but. So you wouldn't do the Dale Earnhardt pink sand bass car? Nope, I couldn't do that. I am sorry. I credit him for for doing that, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Um. Is there any paint schemes that you remember from the nines? I know you guys played, you know, NASCAR '99 and that when you were younger. Because Brian over here knows the Benny Parsons lines. Yeah, Benny Rainbow Benny Parsons. Warriors. This track has the best food. Yes. If you haven't played NASCAR '99 on PS2, you have not lived. <laughs> yes. So yeah. CJ says uh, the the Rainbow Warrior, Jeff Gordon, and a Bill Elliott McDonald's car. Batman car, yes, that too. I have that one at home, but Jess, you don't even Jess. remember any NASCAR. Right? <laughs> so, um, oh yeah, no. So there's some good ones this year. I mean, we got uh, we got obviously the the city Chevrolet for William Byron. Um, I think uh, Denny Hamlin is doing a throwback to Daryl Waltrip, the uh, Western Auto car, the Chrome one. Yeah, and he's actually got the Chrome numbers. Who knew that NASCAR actually kind of has a problem with chrome numbers? I don't agree with that. I didn't know that. Yeah, here, here's a picture. I'll post this one too. So uh, it's pretty awesome. That's that's up on my list. That is a good looking car. Right there. Oh yeah, the Miller highlight. Yep, Brad Keselowski. Keselowski ran one of them last year, didn't he? Yeah. And it was good. That was probably the best looking throwback car of them all because a lot of them were just. Um, not even approaching a throwback car. It was like they're using yeah. their fa their own colors and yeah. just running a different lines and paint scheme on it, but it, it, it didn't even look like the old car. Uh, Joey Logano. Oh, this is a toss Pens back. The old Penzo, Steve Park car. He's doing the Kevin Harvick to, to 2007. Come on. That's come on, man. Have, come on, man. Come on, Skip. Yes, his wife is wears a driver's seat in the family. I agree with that if she picked this and he let it happen. <laughs> I mean, come on, yeah. Yes, she wears the pants. That's what she wears a fire suit. Fire suit, family. yes. Yeah. And um let's see, uh Kyle Larson is doing a Ricky Craven throwback. Um Really? Yeah, to the um to the Kodiak green and white. Okay. It's it looks all right cuz he's got clothes. That could be a Rusty there. Wallace throwback too, you know what I mean? Oh, that's true. That was his championship car. The mellow yellow car, CJ just mentioned that. Kyle Petty ran. And that might be my favorite 90s right there. And they, yeah, two years ago, Larson ran it in the 42. Yeah. yeah. Russ Wheeler. <laughs> yeah. I, oh, I would, that'd probably be my pick for sure. Uh, Bubba is that Wallace. an Adam Petty car? Yes, that's Bubba Wallace. Bubba Wallace is doing an Adam Petty throwback. That, that's was, a good looking car. If oh, you've yeah. ever, you ever see an Adam Petty car? Arca, this is his he Arca passed away when Charlotte. you guys were young, but it was oh, like yeah. a Spree's car, I think, yeah. as was, yeah. as was the. Uh, I'm sure a lot of our viewers. Yeah, 
Yeah. Harvick, I think, ran the Crown Royal car. I believe so. Or would you run the Laughing Clown Malt Liquor? Clown Malt Liquor. Yeah, that's, that's a Ricky CK's Bobby car. That's a Ricky Bobby. Oh, yeah. 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 I know yeah, but Jake the Laughing Clown Malt Liquor car was a Ricky Bobby car. Yes. Um, Jimmy Johnson is running a throwback to his uh, to his off-road truck. Okay. That's that's pretty cool that Allie. That's Allie different. Did it's that. better than the one he ran last year. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. And then uh, – Alex Bowman, last but not least, doing a Tim Richmond throwback. That's pretty cool. I mean, Tim Richmond. What a guy. That's. Yeah, yeah. Ron he liked to do crazy. stuff. Oh yeah. He uh, he said he wanted to succeed in the fun department. He definitely went through the fun department. That's. Yeah, yeah. Ron said he liked. He was a cup champion Ron. in the fun department. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. He could drive. You yep. drive the wheels off anything. Yeah. Let's, let's all re remind everybody Days awesome. of Thunder based off of Tim Richmond. My brother didn't know that. How do you not know that, man? It's clearly Tim Richmond. <sighs> it's like it's Tim Richmond, and you got Harry, Harry Hyde, Harry Hogg. Um, natural. We just got to get your brain functioning with your natural ability. That's it. <laughs> 50 laps. Oh, wait, wait. 50 laps my way. Here we are. It's the name of the show. It's what inspired this show, Days of Thunder. That's true. So uh, I think that's a good way to end it. We ended at Days of Thunder. If you have not seen that movie, Steve Letarte and Jeff Burton apparently have not seen that movie. Go watch the movie, please. I, I, we will explain the movie at a later time. It's why we why we picked 50 laps my way. Um as as our title to the podcast, um, hopefully that everybody knows what that's. Means. You run fifty laps your way, and you run fifty laps my way. I'll beat you every time. Every time. What was he? Was he? Us four tenths faster? He didn't say it was four seconds faster, did he? He might have said four seconds. Man, that's bad. That was his way worked, man. But his tires are like oh, just blistered, yes. peeling apart, and everything yeah. else. You can't hear us smacking on one. His tire way, here. my way. Boom. I was four seconds faster. Now buy me some lunch at the highway joint. Yes, exactly. And on that note, we'll end it here, guys. Thanks again for listening. Hope to uh, please everybody next time and have some entertaining stuff and have some good guests. We appreciate CJ, Jesse, and Ron coming on, being a part of the TMR team. We wanted to have you guys on after Martinsville, introduce you to everybody. So hopefully we got more to talk about here soon and more things we're getting involved in. And and uh, hopefully some of the fans listening, we can get them involved too. I know a lot of local people listen. So um, thanks again, guys, and uh, T-Mac out. Clear, clear.